First off, thank you guys for being so patient. I spent the last couple of weeks fairly sick, so when I got home from work, I'd eat, I'd start on a script, and then I'd fall asleep within 15 minutes. And I also got near Automata, and I can't get enough of that combat, combat system. So we'll start off with this. Zio Gang or Xiao Gang? Xiao Gang? Zio Gang asks, what's a good temperature for the liquid in the pump? This is in reference to my Kraken X62 review. Cam will show you the liquid temperature of the Kraken cooler, so that's a neat feature, though it's more kind of just for fun than anything else. The important temperatures are your CPU temp and your GPU temp. Your CPU temperature will not be below your liquid temperature, and your liquid temperature will not be below your ambient temperature. So I think they just kind of throw that figure in for perspective. As long as your CPU and GPU temperature stay below 80-ish Celsius all the time, you should be okay. Both can operate higher than that, but when you approach 85 Celsius or maybe higher, I would start getting a little nervous. Um, if that's for 24-7 operation, once in a while is probably okay. Panic Isu asks, how do you feel about doing your own cable sleeving at home versus having a website do it for you, like cable mod? I have never tried it before, and I hadn't looked into it before this question, but after some research, I decided... Life is too short. It looks like a time-consuming process, and if I happen to goof up, my computer might explode. I might do it someday, but that won't be until way later. Like, maybe on a, a rainy day or something. As for actually doing it, it's not a terrible idea. If you look at custom sleeve cables from like Cable Mod or Corsair or BitPhoenix or something, you'll notice that one cable kit is pretty expensive. It's like a hundred US dollars. If you have the time, go for it. You can probably save a lot of cash. Derek Wang and many, many other people ask, how did you set up the clock on the desktop behind you? It's it's not a clock right now, It's but it's still an animated wallpaper and people have been asking about that in general. It's called Wallpaper Engine and you can find it on Steam. I'll have that in the description of each video as well as the particular wallpaper I'm using. If I forget, feel free to remind me. It's a pretty cool application, although it does crash every once in a while, but it's still in beta or early access or, or, or something like that. So don't expect it to work all the time. It's not bad, it's just crashes sometimes. My Keys asks, what's that audio rack behind you? You can make a my audio setup type of video. I have one of those planned. Kind of. I've mentioned bits and pieces of my audio equipment like all over the place, but I don't think I've got an actual video outlining specifically what I use and how I use it. I'm also going to include video equipment in that video, so if you're curious about my production stuff in general, that'll happen... eventually. To answer the actual question, the audio rack is the DBX286S preamp processor, and the audio interface I use is the Scarlett Solo. The microphone I'm currently using right here is the Audio-Technica AT875R, and that's what I do most of the time. And then for voiceovers, I use the Audio-Technica AT2020 or my Shure SM7B, depending on pretty much just my mood. I don't know, sometimes I like talking into one, sometimes I like talking into the other. Jordan McDonald asks, how did you get started with YouTube? What did you do before? And what made you decide to change? What was your process for success? And I kind of talked about this in like the first Q&A video, but I guess more detail never hurt anybody. Um, I got started because someone suggested I might be good at it. I continue to do it because it proves to be entertaining. Mostly because I laugh at my own jokes. Um, what I did before is the same as what I do now, minus some video games. I work as a portfolio analyst, and I still do, so YouTube is just a hobby for now. And instead of drowning in video games during my free time, I work on videos instead. So that being said, nothing has really made me change. It was mostly just that suggestion to give it a shot. And now that being said, I would gladly do this full time. I just can't right now. The amount of money that YouTube makes me currently only just about covers half of a week's worth of rent. And then that transitions well into your next question. Um, I don't consider this to be a success. Not yet, at least. I'll consider it to be successful if I can make enough to do this as a full time job, but I'm like a ways away from that. As for my process for success, that's super easy. Just use thumbnails with big obnoxious fonts and big red circles and arrows, put in tags that are popular and don't actually relate to your video, and clickbait titles. And then what? Well, what happens next may surprise you. I'm kidding. I don't know if I can call it a process for success, but my general process follows two idioms. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right, and idle hands are the devil's plaything, or playground, it goes something like that. I try to keep busy all the time, so I'm always working on something, and when I do something, I'll do it several times over until it either sounds right, or it comes out the way I want it to. 
If it doesn't, I do it over. Like that last video where I recorded the entire thing in 1080p and had to do it all over again in 4K. That was disappointing. And after that, I tried to just make myself as available for people who leave comments or ask questions at any given point in time. I think the interaction is a pretty important part of the whole package, so I try to make it a point to keep that option open, and that's been more or less how I've been handling YouTube. It's nothing too complicated, I think. For general updates, I have two cases here that entities sent me for review, so I'll be looking at those soon. One is the Crystal Cube case, and the other is a budget case. It's the A15S. The name the fellow gave me was really long and complicated. It looked like more of a model number or a part number than actual name, but the box is A15S, so I'm going with that. The 5 p.m. case I just did, that system is gonna be migrated to the cube case for the sake of the video. I'm not sure which one I'm keeping yet. Depends on which one I like better. Not positive. I have fans from Corsair coming in, the HD120 RGB ones to put in that case because RGB stuff looks good in tempered glass. I'm pretty sure everybody agrees on that, more or less. And I want to start modding stuff. Um, I'm going to be looking for acrylic panels to work with. I don't know if I'm going to do any fancy bending or not, but I'm definitely going to cut them and paint them. Uh, I'm going to be doing, like, vinyl wrap stuff on the panels to get, like, dual colored thing. You'll... I'm bad at explain. I haven't done this before, so I'm bad at explaining it, but I've been doing a lot of research, and I'm going to put something together, and it might come out really garbage. I've been trying to cut... Hold on. So this is, like, one of many, many errors. Uh, I can't cut circles. And I've been trying for it. This is a, a gear. It's a gear. I don't know if you can tell, but you know, maybe this is here's another attempt. This is a gear, more or less. And uh, I figured it would, I thought it would be simple to just kind of, you know what? This actually came out better than the other one did. I, I had a lot of attempts. This was the second attempt. I've, I've done like 15 shots of this or something because I can't do goddamn circles. I wanted to put a gear onto a, uh, an acrylic piece and paint it and make it look like a backplate to either a graphics card or like um, the motherboard tray area or I don't think I'm going to do a motherboard like shield because that seems like a pain in the ass but basically I want to work with acrylic and do something interesting I'm not sure if it'll be a power supply shroud yet or not it depends but it's in the works so there's that I also got Corsair cables in to match the build that I'm going to work on in the crystal cube case but they didn't send me the 24 pin. I know they come separate from Corsair's site. Like you get the, the this bunched up and then you get the 24 pin separately, but I ordered them at the same time. This one shipped and came in. The other one hasn't shipped at all and I don't know where it is. So, and then I have this, so I can do a video on this thing too. Um, although I don't know if it's gonna be a comparison between this and the, the Hue Plus or if it's just gonna be its own video. If you guys wanna let me know, I can do whatever. But basically, yeah, this is going in the cube too. I think it's going to look really, really nice. That's all I have to say about that. Um, like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you've got them, and that'll help me structure the next video. If you like videos like this, um, I have a Patreon link in the description that you can check out if you want to help support this kind of thing, but that's not by any means necessary. Another update that I almost forgot about. Some fellow who is out of his goddamn mind donated $50 to the Patreon thing, and I was like, wow! So, um, I have a tech under $10 um, video coming up. It'll be basically five, un five items under $10 each that I'm gonna go over quickly. I ordered the items. They are not all coming at the same time. Some of them were like out of stock, so they'll be here within like the next couple of weeks. So within the next couple of weeks, you can expect to see a video on that. That'll be fun. I, I kind of wanted to say what one of the things was, but I think I'm gonna keep it a secret for now. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven and I am a little dim. Bye bye. I would start getting a little nervous, n ner nervous, where I recorded the entirety, the, well, what happens next may surprise you.